Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric from Stoic Software here again, and today we are going to kick off a series focused on transitioning from SweetScript 1.0 to SweetScript 2.0. Uh, the first video in this series will introduce the fundamental concept that drives all of SweetScript 2.0, the module. Before we get started, every video I create is part of my free effective SweetScript uh, email list. Every day I dive into more details, uh, answer questions from readers on uh, the topic for the week. You can find out more about Effective SweetScript and get signed up at EffectiveSweetScript.com. Uh, you'll find a link for that down in the video description. With that out of the way, let's get started. SweetScript 2.0 is entirely based on a concept called modules. These modules give us the capability to structure and organize our code into small, useful individual units that can then be combined together to form larger, more powerful applications. Previously, the entire SweetScript 1.0 API was essentially organized as a single global library file. That file got loaded for every single script, regardless of how much of the API the script actually used. In SweetScript 2.0, the APIs have been categorized and separated into modules. Uh, related API functions have been placed into a module together. For example, the, all of the search-related APIs have been placed into a module called n slash search. The n here is a namespace that by convention indicates this module is provided by NetSuite. Um, at this time there are almost three dozen modules provided by NetSuite for the SweetScript API. You can find the complete list of those in the help documents on the page titled SweetScript 2.0 modules. Now, our scripts only need to load the specific modules they will actually utilize. This prevents our scripts from loading a ton of wasted functionality that they'll never actually use anyway. So we'll look at an example of all of this shortly, but first let's discuss a little bit about why this modular architecture is more advantageous for us as developers. By moving to a, mo a modular architecture, we can now break down our business logic into small digestible pieces and build our applications out of these reusable pieces. Just like we use functions to break down individual behaviors, we can then use modules to group those functions together and then multiple scripts can leverage the modules we've created so that the business logic stays in one single place in our code. Uh, and this is a big step in helping us keep our code dry or don't repeat yourself, which is a very important uh, concept in software development. The other advantage this modular approach provides for us is automatic dependency management. So our scripts specify exactly which modules they need, and that's we will automatically go fetch them for us when our script executes. Uh, if the modules that we've specified in turn have their own dependencies, that's we will automatically handle retrieving any nested dependencies as well. Uh, now you can compare that to Sweet Script, Sweet Script 1.0, where the developer, you were responsible for explicitly specifying all direct and indirect dependencies and keeping them in the correct order on the script record. Uh, this was a nightmare to manage for large applications, but with, Sweet, with SweetScript 2.0, it's just no longer an issue because all of that uh, is handled automatically for us. The JavaScript development community has actually designed several different uh, specifications for defining modules. Each one has its own unique syntax and capabilities. Uh, for SweetScript 2.0, NetSuite has chosen the AMD specification, 
uh, which stands for asynchronous module definition. Now, this specification is implemented by the third party library called require.js. Um, NetSuite has created their own customized version of require.js specific to SuiteScript. I won't go into all the specifics here on require.js, but you can find links to resources for further reading down in the video description. All right, I think we've all had enough theory, so let's look at how to actually write one of these modules. So to get started, every module is going to start out with a JS doc comment that tells NetSuite what version of SuiteScript we're using, what type of script we're creating, and the accessibility rules for our module. Uh, if you're not familiar with JS doc, again, you can find a link for some further study down in the video description. So here is our JS doc comment. As you can see, we have put a few special tags into the modules JS doc so that NetSuite can identify this script correctly. Uh, when we upload our source file to the file cabinet, NetSuite will use this information to automatically create a script record for us. Uh, we can add any other tags or uh, descriptions to our JS doc here, but these three are the required ones by NetSuite. After our JS doc, every module is declared by invoking the define function from require.js. Define takes two arguments, first the list of dependencies, then a callback function to execute once all dependencies have been loaded. Uh, for now, we won't use any other modules, we'll just leave the dependency list empty. And we'll start out with our classic example of a client script that displays an alert on page init. So we start by adding any functions and properties to our module in order to define our business logic. In this case, I just need one function to display an alert. Notice there is nothing different or special about the way we write functions within our modules. In the body of our module, we simply write very typical plain JavaScript. Now in SuiteScript 1.0, in order to execute this function on the page init event, we would go manually create our script record, uh, upload our file, then manually type show message or whatever our function name happens to be, into the page init function box. That is not how SuiteScript 2.0 works. Instead of manually describing which functions the script should call on specific events in the script record, we define that directly inside our module using the return of our callback function. The keys of our output object are the event IDs, and the values are the functions to call on that event. Each script type has a dedicated page in the help that defines its events and its IDs. At this point, we actually have a complete SuiteScript 2.0 module that defines a client script. It's time to upload it to NetSuite and test it out. Let's save our file. Just like we would with SuiteScript 1.0, we go to customization, scripting, scripts, new. But now we can upload our file directly from here. In the dialog that pops up, we browse to our file, select it, click save. And then we just click create script record. And NetSuite with a 2.0 script automatically detects which version we're using, detects which type of script it is, all based on our uh, JS doc comment, those tags that we added. So just like 1.0, now we can give it a name, an 
ID. And then we deploy it. Let's deploy this to the customer record. Save. Now after we save, notice the automatic detection of our page init function. We don't have to tell NetSuite the name of the function, and we no longer have to worry about keeping the script record in NetSuite in sync with the source file if we ever decide to change the name of our function. Now, if we edit a customer, we should see our alert message pop up. There it is. All right, we have our client script displaying a message, but we haven't seen how the dependency management works. So let's take a look at that now. For SuiteScript 2.0, NetSuite has created a couple modules that help us add UI components to our applications. One of those modules is called n slash UI slash message, which helps us display native status messages at the top of the record form. So I want to replace our simple alert with a native message. I'm going to leverage this message module. I've added the module name to our dependency list, and then I've also added a corresponding parameter to my callback function. I can name this parameter whatever I want. I've chosen to call it message. Uh, now this uh, message reference is how I will call the module's functionality within my own module. The message module defines two methods of interest, one for creating an instance of a message, and then one for actually displaying it on the form. So we will replace our previous alert with calls to these two methods. That is all we need to change. Let's upload our changes and see the message module in action. Just like in 1.0, we edit our source file directly from our script record. Click Edit and paste the contents of our file. Save. If I refresh the customer, there is our native message. Now there's some important, there are some important things to notice here that are stark differences from SuiteScript 1.0. So first, let's take a look at this create method on the message module. The method accepts a single object parameter rather than a list of separate parameters. So I only pass the one object. I don't pass the title, the message, and the type separately. And that is true of all SuiteScript 2.0 APIs. Um, basically, every 2.0 function accepts an object instead of a list of parameters. This makes it so that you don't have to remember the specific order of parameters and specifying each option by name helps make it really clear uh, which option you're specifying. So if you recall a function like NLAPI send email from 1.0, uh, that function had nine parameters and you had to remember exactly which order, you know, which one was the carbon copy, which one was the blind carbon copy, how many nulls do I need? And it was a giant nightmare. Uh, you don't have that problem with 2.0 APIs because they all accept objects like this. The second thing is to notice how I was able to chain the create and the show method together. If I invoke the create method here, and then I can immediately chain the show method to it. Uh, this is called a fluent API and nearly all SuiteScript 2.0 objects support it. Lastly, notice the enumeration 
that we use for the type option. So instead of using raw uh, string IDs everywhere for things like record types or search types, or in this case, uh, message types, we SweetScript 2.0 has created enumerations for those instead of using uh, magic strings everywhere. Uh, I, for one, see this as a very welcome relief. Hate using raw magic strings all over the place. I really like these programmatic object references instead. Now let's briefly explain uh, or examine some of the other major differences between the versions. Now, many of these we will explore in detail in future videos, but I believe it's worth at least mentioning them here. So as we've already seen, modules have replaced uh, unstructured files. There is not a one-to-one -one relationship between functions in 1.0 and 2.0. Some 1.0 functions have been broken up into multiple 2.0 functions. Uh, 2.0 adds additional functionality that 1.0 does not have at all. And some 1.0 functions don't even appear in 2.0 at all. The sublist indices now start at zero instead of one. Uh, we'll see that a little later in the series when we cover working with sublists. Um, similarly, in that video, we'll cover how in the client script, the recalc event has been replaced by a new event called sublist changed. SweetScript 2.0 adds a new script type called MapReduce, and that has been introduced to handle bulk processing. Uh, this type of script can be run on a schedule. It automatically leverages multiple queues, and it is supposed to manage its own governance usage. Uh, there will be a dedicated video for MapReduce scripts as well. Uh, SweetScript 2.0 is supposed to perform faster than SweetScript 1.0. Um, I don't have any metrics to definitively say whether that's true, but NetSuite has stated that SweetScript 2.0 performs faster than 1.0. Now, as long as 1.0 is still supported, there are some rules governing the cohabitation of the two script versions. So first and foremost, 1.0 and 2.0 cannot intermix within the same script. So you cannot use 2.0 modules as 1.0 library scripts, and you cannot include 1.0 files as 2.0 dependencies. So within the same script, they do not play well together. They don't even work together. Um, but the two versions can intermix in the same account, in the same application, and they can even be deployed to, on the same record. So you can have a 1.0 client script deployed to your customer record, and you can also have a separate 2.0 client script deployed to the customer record as well. They just can't intermix within the same script. That is it for this lesson. If you liked what you saw in this video, hit that thumbs up button and go share what you learned with someone else. Uh, click subscribe to stay tuned for the rest of the series on transitioning from SweetScript 1.0 to 2.0. Thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep sharing, and I'll see you next time.